Hello, fellow heathens. Welcome to Sacred Soliloquy. Grab your favorite pillow and get cozy and comfortable as we dive right in and narrate Philippa. I didn't mind taking a short walk before I called for an Uber to take me back to my hotel. I needed the fresh air. The city was intimidating at night, having some of the most ancient architecture. It was the center of Christianity in real time. I made my way to a remote jazz club. I haven't been to one of those since my time in the US, and I needed the musical clarity for sure. I sat at the back of the almost packed club. Everyone seemed to have been enjoying themselves. I couldn't agree more. The jazz band was remarkable, playing song after self-made song, I believe, because I couldn't recognize any of them. Time at the club seemed to have been flying. By the time the jazz band got off stage, it was almost midnight. I didn't realize I had been there for almost five hours. I was refreshed, very refreshed. I called an Uber and begged for the longest route possible just to have more sight to see. And I was granted my wish. I decided to stay in the next day and catch up on hanging projects that had to be cleared before I could go traveling next month. I took several calls from networthy clients and assisted them in any way I could. After a few hours of call after call, I took a glimpse of my notifications to see if there was a new incoming number possibly Kimberly, whom I haven't spoken to in four days now. To my dismay, there was nothing of the sort. I took to myself to check my Facebook page, as I hadn't had time to read any of the comments that were left on my recent posts. All the comments seemed positive, motivating me to explore and do what I can, when I can, and where I can. One particular comment piqued my interest. Geneva, it's me. I need to see you. My heart sank and frustration ruled my mind. Kimberly had his management and I my past, which seemed to be catching up to me. I needed to find a way to disappear. Making seven new Facebook accounts in a year just to avoid this past seemed useless. The telephone rang, slightly shocking me. I hastily picked up and replied, Hello? Yes, Ms. Geneva there is a Philippa here for you. The other voice said, A who? I asked, tell her it's important. I heard another voice claim. Yes, um, it's important, the receptionist said. Okay, I will be right down, I replied. I hung up and reached for the first attire I could find as my satin blue bathrobe wasn't going to do. I put on my velvet overrolls and tied my hair in a bun. I managed to get down to the reception. She is waiting outside, miss, the receptionist said. Because it was still day, I didn't keep in mind that I had to take a weapon in case this backfired. People don't get killed during the day, do they? A firm hand pulled me to an empty alley. I thought you should know this about the Vatican. The same woman from the Vatican Museum told me as she looked at me dead in the eye. Are you? Yes, yes, I am Philippa and I am not crazy. She said, how did you even? I said, look, I can't talk here, but you should come to this address if you want to know what's going on. She interrupted. She quickly left the area and was nowhere in sight. The acquaintance was so quick that it took me a while to process what just happened. How did she even find me? I collected my thoughts and walked back to my room knowing my next debut was to visit this woman who seemed sure there was something wrong with the Vatican. I sat, waiting patiently for the time on the address. At exactly 23 hours, I had left my penthouse for an eye-opener this woman, Philippa seemed to have. I had rented a motorbike that would take me around the city from time to time, and that was my go-to on the way to Philippa. The streets were extremely dull that night, something extraordinary in Rome, which went in consensus with my fear of what I was going to encounter. This time I had a well-sharpened knife and spray if anything went wrong, my time in karate lessons may be proven significant at this moment. I arrived at the address, and was it breathtaking? I didn't expect a woman of her stature to be living in a fancy villa, let alone in the suburbs. 
I made my way to the door and knocked several times before anyone came to answer. Philippa opened the door for me and welcomed me calmly, this time her eyes reflecting peace rather than danger, like the last time we met. You may leave your coat on the hanger. She insisted. I did as I was told and followed her like a tail. My master and his family have gone for a trip. I am left alone to tend to the house. She explained. I didn't know you had a, I said. A job? Don't believe everything you hear from the streets. She reckoned. We walked into the study. It was massive. Regency themed, the cool color palettes reflected the characters of the dwellers as I thought to myself. It was not easy hiring mischief, an infamous character from the Vatican. We can talk here, freely. She stated. She invited me to a glamorous ocean blue bourbon sofa, and she sat next to me. The Vatican is in the Illuminati, a cursed land it is. She stated. The Pope is the pathway to the Antichrist, saw it with me own eyes. She said boldly. I heard you ask about the Caucasian Jesus back in the museum and I knew you were someone that was looking for answers. She stated. And I am here to give them to you. Hey, thank you for taking your time and tuning in. Stay blessed and be blessed. And as always, don't forget to like, follow, and share the episode with family and friends.